It's that time of year again. Yup, you guessed it, tax season. According to the IRS, 20 to 25% of all Americans wait until the last two weeks before they file their tax returns. Now look, today's guest is a highly sought after CPA. Shania is the owner of Fola Financial. And let's just say she dropped so many gems. Fun fact, um, most Americans pay more than 50% of their income over their lifetime to taxes. That's crazy. Now, some people look forward to this time of year. And the ones who don't, well, it's probably because they don't have a strategy. We, especially in the black community, I think we get so wrapped up on making the money mm -hmm. that we do not put the strategy in placement. Every, and I say this respectfully, every wealthy white person that I meet, man, that's all, it's, everything is a tax move. Now, before we hop into today's show, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Now, all right, let's jump into today's video. Yo, sis, it is tax time, and right now people are prepared to file, get their money back, so I wanna have the conversation right now, up front. What are the things they should be doing right now to prepare to file the taxes? I would definitely say taking an audit of their financial year. Okay. So like, this is the perfect time to sit down with yourself and figure out what happened last year. Um, how did you make income? Um, where did your money go? What expenses did you incur? What did you invest in? Did, what project did you work on? Um, this is gonna allow you to think about what type of tax documents they'll be expecting to receive. So let me answer this question. Is that for a W-2 employee and a self-employed 1099 employee or is it just for one or the other? It's for everyone. So even with W-2 individuals, making sure that you have a clear idea of all of the jobs that you worked last year okay. um, to make sure that you get all your W-2s. Um, Cause some, you know, some of us, we have jobs here and there, we forget about them. And guess what, If you, even if your W-2 only had like $100 on it, you not filing that one W-2 can trigger a tax audit, right? Absolutely. So with 1099s, you wanna think about what gigs you did last year. So like, mm -hmm. who did you work with? What companies did you work with? This is going to allow you to know, well, where are you expecting to receive W-9s from, right? So just taking in that, of that audit of what happened last year is the perfect way to allow you to think about what do you, expecting so that you can know what type of tax documents you'll be receiving. So, Anthony and I discussed um, making sure that you are actually aware of all that you need to collect before you are filing your taxes. And the reason being is you cannot file an inconsistent tax return and, you know, not be aware that a tax audit may happen, right? So, say for example, if you have income sitting in certain accounts that's earning interest, you should be expecting to receive a Form 1099-INT. Um, of course, from the jobs that you work, you're expecting a Form W-2. Now, sometimes, you know, your employer may not send your W-2 timely enough to where you have a tax appointment set. Um, you want to actually wait until you get that physical W-2 or a digital version of the W-2 before you file. You never want to file an incomplete tax return. The thing about it is, whenever you get a tax form, guess who has copies of it? The IRS does, and so does the state and local government. So they're already expecting for you to submit certain things. So if you submit a return, and against their system, there's incomplete information, you automatically trigger a tax audit and you will get a letter from the IRS and most likely your state government as well. Yo, so let me ask a question, because you taught me something this year. Um, I always thought like, because I am a LLC filing as an S Corp, mm -hmm. um, that all the net profit still flows into me. Mm -hmm. So is that the same case for like a 1099 employee that all of the net profit from their business will go into their personal side. So they're still only filing one tax return. tax return. They're not filing one for the person and one for the business. Exactly. So what this introduces is the concept of a pass-through entity, okay. right? Okay. So pass-through entities are going to be your sole proprietors, so people who don't have a legal entity, yeah. um, those who are single LLC members um, or partnerships or S corporations, these are what we call pass-through entities. Uh, and a pass-through entity pretty much means that rather than paying taxes at both the corporate and the personal level, you're just paying taxes at the personal level only. And of 
course, there's entities that are not passed through, aka C corps, where you pay taxes at the C corp level and not at the personal level, unless you have income flow from your C corp to your personal. But again, most businesses that we usually run and encounter are going to be passed through, aka one tax return, which makes it easy, you know, for owners to at least plan that they just have one return to file. So yeah. So so a lot of people saying, okay, cool. What are all of the LLCs they can find? I mean, not find that they could uh, start. So, you know, you got the LLC, S Corp, mm -hmm. C Corp, sole proprietor. Yep. What's the other one? I think, isn't there another one? So, actually, and this is also brings it up. So, when I say that uh, they can, they only are filing one tax return, yeah. they're only paying their taxes at one level. So, you actually still are filing a separate return for your business. You okay. just still pay all your taxes since it's passed through at your individual level. So with an S-Corp or a partnership, you're still filing an 1120S if it's an S-Corp. You're okay. still filing a 1065 if it's a partnership. And then you get a Schedule K-1 that gets reported onto your personal return, okay. similar to like passive income via the W-2 route. So like yeah. you get a form to file. But you still are filing your business returns. They're called informational returns. Ooh. So this brings up the question like, well, what type of entities are there? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, some can argue that really there's only like two entity types. Like, like two legal structures. Um, there's LOCs and then there's C-Corps. Okay. Usually every other entity type is a variation of those two. So here's an example. Um, uh, a, a S corporation can have a LOC legal background or a C-Corp legal background. You can be an LOC and elect to be taxed as a C-Corp, or if you have more than one member, you can be a partnership. Um, now, if you are C-Corp, you can keep C-Corp taxation, or you can elect to be taxed as an S-Corp. Okay. So you see, it went over the array where we have LOC single member, uh, which is just you, LOC um, dual member, which will be a partnership. Mm -hmm. um, then we have C-Corporations, S-Corporations, and of course we have like not-for-profits, and those are gonna be your most common entity types. So, First year I met you, I was just an LLC. Mm -hmm. Then you told me we're going to file as an S Corp. Mm -hmm. If I wasn't filing as an S Corp, how would I have filed? Or would I have had to file as something? Mm -hmm. So you would have filed as a pretty much LLC that are single membered. Uh -huh. If you're not a S Corp, you're going to file as um, a disregarded entity, AKA you're filing on the Schedule C as a sole proprietor would. Ah. Um, the thing about it is that the Schedule C, yes, for those who have business losses, we get to deduct it. But once you have a positive net income, you are going to pay income taxes on that income and also self-employment tax. Taxes, right? What? So those self-employment taxes, that's your, your Medicare, your FICA. So when you become an S-Corp, rather than having all of your net income be subject to both net income and, and self-employment taxes, right. you can pay yourself a salary. Only your salary is going to, you know, pay that self-employment tax, which is typically now payroll taxes. Yeah. And the rest of your income can flow through and only pay net income taxes. Mm. So it saves you so much money by being an S-Corp. But again, mm. we only recommend it when entrepreneurs begin to net more than like $40,000 worth of income because you have to pay yourself a salary. And net simply means, y'all, profit. Exactly. <laughs> I just want you to understand that. Because what should be my net? I mean, I made 40. No, no, did you, did you profit 40,000? Exactly. You know, and that's the key thing. Now, Correct me if I'm wrong, because you're the CPA. I don't study all this stuff. I'm on <laughs> personal finance. You're on the business side of things. When I came to you, I started with you when I first started my business, but it was in January, I want to say, December or January, we went ahead and filed something to make me file as an S-Corp. When is the latest? Mm -hmm. Like, is it too late for someone right now to file for an S-Corp to get those privileges for 2022? So that's a great question, because um, technically speaking, you have until the second month in the 15th day of the year to elect a tax status for that current year. Uh -huh. So technically, if I want to be an S Corp for 2023, uh -huh. my deadline is February 15th of 2023. Now, of course, when you're working with an expert like a CPA um, or EA or a tax expert, you know, we know the codes, you know? Yeah. So um, what we do for certain clients is, based upon why you missed that deadline, we can make certain arguments to pretty much let the IRS know, like, hey, we know that our client is filing this um, S election late, so to file for an S Corp, we have to file a form 2553. Okay. Um, and again, if you miss the deadline, there are certain... There are certain, you know, things that you can explain. A CPA can. <laughs> you know? Not you. 
<laughs> Not me. Right. The CPA. Okay. There's a way for you to explain to the IRS, like, hey, my client missed this S Corp deadline because of these factors. And yeah. again, we know what to communicate. Yeah. Um, and of course, we do things legally and ethically. So as long as our clients actually fit those categories, yeah. we can go ahead and make a case for a late ex-election. And honestly, just so people know, one of the the one of the metrics that you can use is the fact that you have no clue that that was available. Mm. The IRS understands that most of the public is ignorant with taxes. Like we don't, we're not taught these things. Yeah. So sometimes when it comes down to even defending yourself in tax audits or you know making special elections, you can let them know, hey, I wasn't even aware that this was an option. This is why I wasn't able to file it on time or etc. So yes, it's all about communication. All about communication. Yes. According to recent stats, only about half of African Americans have some form of estate planning put into place. This includes important documents like your wills, your trust, and your power of attorneys. Additionally. Only about 60% of all people have life insurance coverage. But why is it so important for not just black people, but all of us to have these things put into place? You see, life insurance can provide financial protection for your loved ones in the event of your unexpected death. It can help cover funeral and burial expenses, uh, pay off debts, and even your mortgages. But here's what I really want you to consider. It can provide income for your loved ones to build wealth with. You see, estate planning, on the other hand, can help ensure that your assets are distributed according to your wishes after your death and that your loved ones are taken care of. If you truly love, and I mean this, if you truly, truly love your loved ones, don't leave their financial security at chance. I want you to get life insurance today. You can get a free quote with my friends over at Ethos by visiting anthonyoneal.com forward slash life insurance or by clicking the link in today's show notes. Protect your family's future and give yourself peace of mind. Don't be in heaven and you're full of joy and your family is here on earth struggling and stressed. Get life insurance today with my friends over at Ethos. Hey, now let's get back to today's show. I know it's a good one. And this is a reason why, you guys, I say hiring a CPA is beneficial, you know, because I would have been jacked up without you and your team. <laughs> like, you know, tell me I would have paid this, paid that, paid this. I would have been upset. But I think it's very important for you all to, one, watch the show, listen to the information, but then, two, not just watch, retain their services. You know, now Fola, Shanae, and her team can't service everybody because they don't. It's just impossible. One person can't service everybody, but they can service you know a lot of people. We're going to drop their information in today's show notes. They're going to be helping people file taxes and get their businesses up and running. And one of one of her best kept secrets is not the filing part. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. It's it's not the filing part. That's I think anyone can 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 file. You know, it's the strategy that her and her team really, really are good at. You know, before I purchase anything major, I just texted her the other day, I think it was like 10 o'clock at night. I was like, yo, sis, because, you know, I don't want to offend no brother if she got a brother on the side. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, sis, in all caps. Like, this just so he see that. <laughs> like, I'm thinking about doing this play. Is it a good play financially? And she was like, yeah, bro, it's, it's a real good play. It's a money play. Then I said, hey, should I do that? She was like, hey. Nah, you, you probably can't. Do, you could do it, but you can't do it from a tax strategy perspective. And you need someone who's going to do it legally and ethically because there are a lot of people online, respectfully saying this, <laughs> who call themselves CPAs. And they are the king or queen of getting you refunds and the king and queens of helping you write off every single thing. And really what they're doing is really setting you up to get audited or setting you up to where you cannot like get into a home. Who? Because of how like media is so dominant in our lives, um, you know, it's really easy for someone to develop a perception of being an expert, right? Um, you always want to use your discernment and you know seek outside knowledge before you c connect with anyone or contract with anyone. So just because someone is an accountant doesn't mean that they actually know as much as a CPA. And just because someone is a CPA doesn't mean that they know thoroughly enough about your business. Um, a lot of CPAs specifically focus Focus on different industries. So um, honestly, you want to find someone who's knowledgeable and is going to be a resource based upon what you need. So like one of the things we talked about at the beginning of last year was I was like, hey, I want to start positioning myself because I'm thinking maybe 2024, I'm going to end up moving home. So I need two years of solid tax returns. So that way when I go to a bank, 
you know, I, I can show profit. And a lot of entrepreneurs, they write off everything, and then they have a hard time getting financed. So now they got to go bank statement routes, and I'm not knocking that, but bank statement routes are more expensive than conventional loans. Mm -hmm. And so the strategy was, all right, cool, Amp, since we know that's what you want to do, we're going to dial back on writing things off that you could legally and ethically write off, but we want to show money, so you're going to pay a little bit more taxes, so your taxes can be good, but here's the strategy of how we can do this right. She even asked me, how much do you want to spend for the house? She did the math. This, this is what you need to be making so you can get that amount, so we'll write off everything there. I sent that number into my into, into Churchill, who does my mortgage, and said, hey, will this work? I was like, that's perfect. So like my CPA and my mortgage guy was working together. You gotta have a team around you. It's the strategy for me. It's the strategy for me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so let's let's talk about strategy because mm -hmm. right now it's Valentine, right? And before we get into the strategy part, Fola, you all are are accepting some VIP clients. Yes, we are. Uh, break that down for us this year, because I know y'all are so busy and y'all are mm -hmm. so good. You can't service every single mm -hmm. body, but you're gonna open up, you know, some slots for my people. What what can they expect to get from Fola? Mm -hmm. So that's a great question. Um, so if you choose to file with Fola, you'll get a really luxury tax experience, Lux right? Luxurious tax experience. Because <laughs> um, really, it starts with you know having an intake call. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of people just oh, I just sent my my tax accounts and everything. Like no, you actually have to speak to us first mm -hmm. so that we can help you make sure that you did your financial audit. Yeah. Like, do you know all that you're expecting to receive so that when yeah. we ask for your first you know round of documents, it's you know a full request for the most part. Mm -hmm. um, so you get to speak with a tax accountant and then actually talk about, again, your tax life and make sure that you're organized to give us what we, we need. Um, then from there, you get your first client request. Um, you upload your documents through our secure client portal. And then um, once we get that back, we triage your account. Mm -hmm. So now we're checking, okay, based upon all the questions that you answered in your organizer and on our call, did we get all that we need? If so, we can go ahead and move you to prep. Yeah. So then you're in prep. So you are going to be assigned an accountant. Yeah. So you'll be assigned a tax accountant that's working with you from prep into review time. So after the return is done being prepped, um, we do an in-house quality assurance review mm -hmm. between our staff to make sure that someone else is looking at your return. Yeah. Um, and then once that's done, you'll get invited to have an actual um, client review call with your tax accountant. Yeah. So there you get a full analysis of your, your tax return. And more importantly, you get to ask questions. Like, you know, yeah. a lot of clients are like, okay, here's, I got this much last year. How come I got you know, more or less than what I got the year before? Yeah. Or, hey, I'm paying this amount. Out. What can I do now to make sure I'm not paying this amount? So again, for us, it's really big to have that communication, which is why we only take a certain number of clients because we give them that full experience, right? Um, so once we're done, again, you now have like some more information that you can take and have a great financial year with and better prepare for next tax season. Um, so for this tax season, we are accepting between 200 to 300 new clients okay. since we do have a prior book of clients, um, especially open to the AO community. So. <laughs> it's the AO community for me. It's the AO community for you know me. What I'm saying? So, <laughs> listen, we're going to drop the information below. Um, I would highly encourage you all uh, to take advantage of it. She gets slammed. They get slammed during this time. Listen, they're so slammed that um, uh, Shanae doesn't do my taxes. She over she oversees it. Natalie, what's up, my sister? <laughs> Uh, Natalie is my tax accountant throughout the year. I talk to her every month, and she's a, a, a phenomenal, phenomenal lady who um, does my stuff, and she's really, she's always asking me questions. So many questions. Sometimes she gets on my nerves because I'm like, <laughs> why are you asking me this? You know what I'm saying? But it's her job, you know, to ask me for this. And then I even love, I'm, and, I, and, and I'm being honest, like, they have, it's, it's, I love black excellence when black people come together and do quality stuff, right? So they have a whole portal to where you can go in there, upload stuff, and um, it's clear communication. If you forgot what you said, you can go back to the portal and see what was going on. Um, and, and I love that. Actually, right before you came, Natalie called me, mm -hmm. and she was just telling me, hey, I need this, I need that, I need this. And I was like, oh, okay, I get it to you. Can't do it today, I'm slammed, but I got you. Um, and so I definitely want to encourage you. We're going to drop their information in today's show notes. Check them out. And if you can't get in, I'm sorry. I'm just going to be up front. You know, um, they, they, like I said, they're only accepting 250, about 300 people. Um, and hopefully we can get some of the AO people in the community. But if you really want to start the process, I would encourage you to where if you want to, um, if you really want to um, transition and really start building wealth, look into them. 
You know, wealthy people are not wealthy because they make a lot of money. They have a strategy on how to keep the money they're making. And, and for me, um, I, I said this about I said this about myself. I'm not the smartest person in the world. I'm not the most intelligent person in the world. But just no one can out strategize me. I'm always thinking about okay, what's the strategy? How to do this? Um, Y'all are seeing changes on the show. You see Michelle here. You see we're adding in different things. I'm always thinking of what's the strategy I can put into place that puts me ahead of other people. And what's the strategy you can put into place with your finances that puts you ahead of your peers and of your friends? Everyone's trying to make a lot of money, but they have no strategy on what to do with the money. So I'm giving you the gameplay when it comes to getting out of debt and building wealth. She's going to give you the gameplay on, hey, here's another way we can save you money to help you get out of debt quicker, to help you build wealth more, and to help you build a legacy for your children's children. And while I want to cut a check to the IRS, she, they told me last month I got to cut a check to the IRS. I cut a check. As long as I'm cutting the check, like just the check, now I don't want to be giving them any more money. If I owe them $1,000, I'm going to give them 1000 I ain't giving them 1000 and one. Mm -mm. But I want to contribute to the United States of America. Because in order to keep this place healthy and running and education going, we all got to contribute. I want to contribute, but I don't want to contribute more than I got to. God dag on it. Why is strategy so important, though, from the tax perspective? When it, and I want to talk to black people. Do you have a lot of black clientele? We have, I would say, at least 75% of our clientele are... Black clientele. Yes, black. I love it. Why is it important for us to really understand the importance of having a tax strategy? So, again, finances in our community is just so taboo. And the yeah. thing about it is that most black Americans are, like, working class, right? Mm -hmm. And the more you learn about taxes, you realize that, you know, the low income in the middle class, working class, whatever you want to call it, they pay the most taxes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Wealthy people are earning their income from other ways where by the time they figure out their effective tax rate, which is, again, the amount of tax that you pay based upon all of the income that you earn, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, I have clients that earn millions of dollars, and they pay the same effective tax rate as someone who made a hundred thousand yeah, right yeah, yeah. so um once you understand that you know in order for us to build wealth it's not just about how much you make it's about how, you, how much you maintain how much you can you know now go ahead and reinvest and pay off debt and do things like that taxes you know weigh such a big part for the fun fact the um, most americans pay more than 50 percent of their income over their lifetime to taxes that's crazy what? Yeah, 50% of your income. If you think about it, income tax is just one tax. You're also paying what else type of tax? Sales tax. If you own a home, now you're paying what? Property taxes, real estate taxes, school taxes. You know, if you buy a vehicle, what are you paying? You're paying sales tax, right? So out of all the taxes that we, we pay, it contributes, it takes away from at least 50% of our income. That's way too much. So I want clients to be more tax conscious, right? Mm. So, um, and again, specifically in our community, like being more financially literate and being more financially conscious, being mm. tax conscious is a really big, important part of that because when it comes down to what goes out, taxes is a big piece. So let's actually look at that. How can I minimize this area so I can have more to put in these other areas? Mm. I've never heard of that stat before, that over our lifetime, we will eventually end up paying 50% of the taxes. Mm -hmm. If we put the right strategy in place now, will, do you, will that number go down? Drastically. Like, again, most wealthy people, their effective tax rate, or at least on the personal end, because remember, you can be structured to where I have a corporation that's paying me, and the corporation's paying us taxes. You at the personal level now can tax riders at that level to where you're not paying any taxes. You know what I'm trying to say? Um, real estate is one of those those great plays to where if you properly do it and properly um, calculate with the, the help of depreciation, you can, you know, make a decent profit per property, use depreciation to not have to pay any taxes. And again, the depreciation is an expense that doesn't actually come out of your cash account. Mm. Um, and now, so say, for example, after one property, you're profiting $15,000 per year, a small amount, right? Mm -hmm. With depreciation, your tax on that, $0. Now, let's take that $15,000 and do that with 10 properties. Yeah, yeah. Now I can legally make $150,000 a year and not pay any taxes because oh, I properly oh. calculated how much I make per each investment yeah. and the associated expenses to where I get my net taxable income at zero. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> you talking my language. <laughs> Girl, let me tell you. Oh, that's, oh, she doing something to me. I can't say I'm right, but oh my Lord. <laughs> Entity. That's making me feel good right there. Yes, you're in good hands. Hey, listen, I, I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I ain't going nowhere. I was just actually just talking to my uh my my my, my guy CJ. Hey man, you, 
You, you connected with the tax papers and yeah? He was like, man, not yet. I said, man, what you doing? What you doing? You know what I'm saying? So we, we in, especially in the black community, I think we get so wrapped up on making the money mm -hmm. that we do not put the strategy in placement. Every, and I say this respectfully, every wealthy white person that I meet, mm -hmm. every white person that has a business and is doing pretty good, man, that's all, it's, everything is a tax move. Mm -hmm. Like if it if it if it doesn't benefit me on the tax side, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, really? But then like black people, respectfully, it's like, how much money can I make? And this one white guy, he said, that's where y'all be. He said, that's where y'all be messing up at. Mm. He said, because y'all can make more money than me, but in the long run, I'll make more money than mm -hmm. you because of the strategy. Because I keep it because of the strategy. Mm -hmm. And I say, yo. Now listen, we keep you all butt now. For her to file your taxes, it's, it's, she's pretty affordable. But God damn on it, she expensive every month. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I, I did the math, because it was a part of the layout that, you, that Natalie gave me. Mm -hmm. What I've paid you, you've saved me, I mean so much. Mm -hmm. That if I would not have paid you that amount that I pay her, Jesus, I would have paid more than that and, and just blowing away unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, this y'all, especially in the black community, don't be like, oh child, you expensive. Ask yourself the question, do you wanna pay something expensive up front and then save yourself a whole lot of money in the long run? Or do you wanna go cheap up front or free and be super expensive that you're so uncomfortable? I have black friends who have businesses and they're upset because like, yo, man, how, why owe this much money in taxes? Well, you ain't got no strategy. You ain't got no strategy. One of the strategies we used last year was to buy my Range Rover and we was able to put, uh, write off 100% of that. Yeah. That's changing in the year 2023, right? Um, so depreciation rules change year over year. Yep. Now, the thing about it is when they change, usually there's just new rules. And that's why you want to invest in CPA. CPAs yep. are required to take continuing education. Yep. So I'm forced to learn every single year. So when the tax code does change regarding this rule, all yeah. I'm going to do is figure out another way around it. Ooh. You know, how can I still get the same, you know, outcome for my clients, but using the new and current laws? Hold up. Wait, 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 wait. Talk to me. Talk to me. So, <laughs> so, 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 so. Is, is there a way around this? I mean, people can still write off 100% of the uh, of a car that's over 6,000 pounds. Mm -hmm. Was that the tax code 179? It's 179 depreciation. 179 depreciation. Mm -hmm. So you, boy, I, I retain my knowledge. <laughs> so is there a way to where if the car weighs over 1,000 pounds GPR, right? Mm -hmm. Gross something something. Um, <laughs> before it was 100,000, I mean, before it was 100%, if mm -hmm. I was reading it correctly, it's like now it's down to 80%. Mm -hmm. But you're saying there's probably is a way you can still get back to 100% legally and ethically? Oh, yeah. So, like, number one, um, everything, every tax rule really applies to, like, how you conduct business. Okay. Once you change how you conduct business, you now open up a different realm of the tax code. So, for example, with Section 179, um, in our example, uh -huh. like, that was a business vehicle, so we're able to write it off, yes. right? Yes. Now, so say, for example, for some reason, um, they change it and you can't do 100% deduction anymore for a vehicle. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's in the case of someone who's buying a business as an, uh, as a as an asset, but now, if your main purpose of business is like to buy and sell cars, the thing about it is like buying vehicles now becomes an expense because it's ordinary and necessary in that field, right? So, I mean, of course, it's still subject to depreciation rules, so that's going to like also impact how it's reported, but because you're actually like in the business of buying and selling cars, it, it changes things, right? Mm -hmm. Or, so say for example, if you're in the business of like renting those cars, it'll change how you can recognize how it's expensed against it. So, a lot of deductions has to do with how you're operating first and foremost because really again the IRS rules are ordinary and necessary so we can like maximize what ordinary and necessary means for you to where again you can still deduct that we're definitely going to take that route as well so if I was to do a Turo business mm -hmm. legally and ethically because mm -hmm. some of y'all watching right now was like oh he's trying to find loopholes and he lying no <laughs> some people be watching these shows and be trying to say stupid stuff so I'm asking a real question if I legitimately wanted to open a Turo business, mm -hmm. right, and I went out there and bought me another Range Rover to mm -hmm. put on Turo to make profit, mm -hmm. 
what are my legal what are my legal rights for the tax code? Can I do a hundred percent or do am I doing depreciation um like for my Bentley? Like what we so do? depreciation is always gonna have to happen, okay. right? Um because really what depreciation is meaning that you invest in the major asset and the way accounting works is we try to um match when you're gonna use that asset versus when it's expensing. Okay. So like regardless, you're gonna still have to depreciate. Okay. Um but again, the section one seventy nine it, they're not, you know, it's always going to be another, like, section of the code that may just give you more benefits, you know, specifically if you have this business that's specifically for car rentals. Yeah, yeah. So, um, how you depreciate that asset can change, pretty mm -hmm. much, right? Mm -hmm. So, again, mm -hmm. based upon um, the usage, uh, you know, you'll be able to depreciate over a certain amount of years, but in certain cases, you can accelerate that depreciation in other in yeah, other areas. Because what Section 179 was, was accelerated depreciation, yes. right? So, again, the, the, the tax codes may change, but Ultimately, in most cases, you're still able to get a similar outcome just by using whatever new tax legislations are out there if you can do the proper tax research to support that. Listen, man, this is why she's been rocking me for two years. <laughs> it's been two years since I've been it's rocking with Fola. It's been two years. Since I've been I'm rocking with Fola because I handle my financials. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, a lot of people, you know, um, um, I have a friend coming on the show, uh, Pastor, Pastor Ken, and he... I was just talking about how, like, you know, you got to be intentional about working with, you know, people of color or people not of color. And I told myself that when I launch my business, I'm going to be intentional about giving people of color an opportunity to work with me in my business. I mean, it's been a great experience with you and your company, man. Um, Thank and anytime, you. You're and I'll be favorite. honest. I'm not going to have, like, everything's perfect. If when I did have an issue, I called her. You know, because I try to respect the person who I'm working with, like Natalie. Ah. Mm -hmm. She was like, hey, she's at my house today. She, she, she's sitting here recording. She's like, hey, you want me to jump on there with you? I said, no. Natalie's doing a great job. If there's ever a problem, I'll let you know. You know what I'm saying? Because I respect, I respect the people who I work with, you know. Uh, but in, whenever I did have an issue, here's one thing I love. I sent the email, and it was fixed instantly. And I think that's the most impressive thing to me about working with anyone is whenever there is an issue or a concern, how does that company respond? And um, uh, because I have a personal relationship with her, she responded very well. Um, and I'm just telling y'all, like, hey, this is this is what excellence is all about, whether you're black, white, Hispanic, or what, whatever that is, right? Um, just make sure that you can deal with it. And so we are going to um, drop. Um, her information in today's show notes. Um, click the link, get get there and sign up real quickly. I'm telling you, because um, I would definitely tell you, they stopped taking clients, I think it was like halfway through last year. Um, I had friends who tried to get with her, and she was like, hey, I'm sorry. For us to maintain the level of excellence and the quality that we offer our current clients, we can't take on everything else. Let you know, they ain't, they ain't hurting for no money. So they ain't bought your money. Um, but I think that's why she has longevity in the game, and she has a lot of clientele um, who are multi-millionaires who trust her and her team. So uh, jump on there, file with her. And then also, if you're a W-2 employee and um, you're, you have a business on the side, yo, invest into getting some more consultation to figure out what's your strategy for this year. Explain to them your goals. Explain to them what you're trying to do over the next two, three years so they can put you in a proper position. By the time you get there, you're there right. And let me say this to every small business owner. I, I started with her two months after I started my company. And it was expensive up front because I was like, dang, I ain't making that much money. But I, I had to lay down a foundation right. And a lot of us do not lay down a foundation right when it comes to properly, um, uh, le legally incorporating ourselves and how do we properly do it. So I had my attorney do it. I had my attorney do everything and I'm telling you right now, it was a blessing, yo. And so check them out. We'll put our information in today's show notes. Uh, yo, thank you so much, sis. Thank you for having me. I love you. I love you. I love you. Love y'all. See y'all on the next show. Peace out.